welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanmay Bakshi, and this time we're going to be going over using the Nuance Speech Kit in Swift with iOS. So uh, to begin, this was actually a question sent to me by one of my subscribers. Uh, and so you know what, let's roll the question clip now. This is Tara Balakrishnan, one of my subscribers. Two days ago, she, on a YouTube comment uh, on my NS Speech Recognizer tutorial, actually asked me how we can actually use the Nuance Speech SDK for iOS with Swift. So that's the tutorial I'm creating today. I hope this helps you out, Tara. Okay, so now that you've seen the question sent by Tara, uh, let's actually get into the Mac part in which I will be explaining exactly how we can use the Nuance Speech Kit with Swift too. So uh, let's get right into it, shall we? So welcome back to the Mac part, and now I'm going to be showing you, uh, well, I mean, just before this super simple and short code, I'm going to be showing you a demo of the app that I've made for Tara. So let's begin. Uh, as you can see, this is my iPhone mirrored onto my Mac. All right, so as you can see, what I'm going to do is I am going to say a sentence into this application. and Let's see if it can convert it to text. So as you can see, there is a listen button right over at the bottom here. So we're going to click this. This will turn into listening. Uh, then the label over here will uh, tell us what the result is uh, right as we're done saying things. Uh, now this will automatically detect when you are done talking, uh, and so you don't need to click any sort of stop button, which is just great. Uh, again, Siri is actually powered by Nuance, uh, and so that's actually a really neat fun fact. Uh, but continuing though, let's uh, begin. So let's actually give it something pretty simple, uh, like I have a YouTube channel come up in which I like to teach things, period. As you can see, it says, I have a YouTube channel in which I like to teach things. Alright, so that was pretty simple. Let's try something else though. As you can see, I'm going to click on listen and it turns into listening. I have created this sample app for one of my subscribers. As you can see, it said, I have created this sample app for one of my subscribers. Great, as you can see, Nuance is actually pretty accurate. Now there's one thing that I am going to save for the last, which is actually just fascinating. Uh, but then again, the best examples are going to be saved for the last. Uh, all right, so now let's continue though. Let's begin with the UI, shall we? So as you can see, the UI is even simpler than the code. The listen button has an IB action uh, on the touch up inside, uh, which has button clicked, can't get simpler than that. Button click gets executed right as you click the button. Done. Okay? Referencing outlets, we have an IB outlet that's called a record button connected to the button. That's it. All right? But the label is a bit different. The label is actually connected only to an IB outlet that's called result label. Okay? That's the label. Now, as you can see in the code, we actually have those two IB outlets, uh, record button, which is a UI button, and result label, which is a UI label. Now, as you can see, view controller doesn't just in, uh, actually, let me see, UI view controller uh, is a class. So it doesn't just inherit from UI view controller, but it actually conforms to the SK transaction delegate uh, protocol. Uh, and in case you were wondering, actually, if you were to click on command on your keyboard, actually, I'm, I promise I'm clicking command on my keyboard. And if you move around your mouse, you can actually see these things convert into links uh, whenever you hover over something. Uh, and so basically, if I hover over SK transaction delegate and I click on it and then I release command and the click, uh, as you can see, basically it shows us where this is defined. Uh, and as you can see right now, uh, this is actually a public protocol uh, of SK transaction delegate in the Nuance speech kit uh, framework. And so that's why I know that this is a protocol, so I can say that this con that view controller conforms to it, not inherits from. If it were to inherit from, that would be a class conforms to, meaning a protocol. All right. So I'm going to explain exactly what the difference is in just a second, uh, but then again, that's an entirely separate video, uh, but uh, I will explain in uh, minor detail right now in just a second. So then, let's look at the IB action function called button clicked. Now what does this do? Basically, we're going to take the record button and we're going to set its title to listening and for state normal. You don't need to worry about that. This, that's just telling the record button that it's still a normal button. It's, it's not weird. Um, uh, so basically, uh, the record button's title is now listening instead of listen because you've clicked on it. Uh, but then after that, we actually create a session which is equal to a new speech kit session, or SK session for short. If we go into this, this is inside of speech kit. 
Uh, and so basically, uh, what we're doing here is we're creating that SK session with a URL. Now, basically, the hard part is comes in. You're want you're gonna want to actually go to the link in the description. Uh, the link in the description basically brings you to a page uh, in Nuance uh, that allows you to actually register for an API key. Uh, and so once you've done that, uh, you will actually get something called a sandbox credential. Now. Basically, this is a development credential. Uh, and when you're sort of developing your app with Nuance, you want to use these credentials because they're absolutely free and who doesn't like free stuff? Uh, however, what this is not fit for production use, okay? You want something that's paid when you actually uh, use it for sort of real life, um, when it's on the App Store, basically. Uh, and so, basically, uh, you're just wanna, gonna wanna pay when you're actually uh, using it for production. But right now, when you're developing it, I guess uh, the free credentials work perfectly fine, and they're called sandbox credentials. Uh, and so, basically, what you're gonna wanna do is take those sandbox credentials, and I mean, I'm using SpeechKit too, but you could also use speech kit one but I don't see why you would do that since they have newer versions released now uh, and so basically what you're going to do is you're going to take the link that you get on the um, uh, speech kit 2 um, under speech kit 2 you'll see a link uh, and you're gonna take that link and it'll look something like this except instead of tagimanygmail.com it'll be your own email and then lots of other random letters along with the date that you registered I assume this is I don't know. But continuing though, uh, it'll just give you a link and you want to copy that and paste it into this string. Okay, I have already done that. Then it's also going to give you an application token near the end, uh, but before speech kit one, and you're going to want to copy that into here as well. Once you're done, you're going to actually type in another line of code, and this is will essentially tell the session that's uh, and so the session is basically connecting to the Nuance SDK in the cloud. And so basically, what you're going to do is you're going to say, you know what? Start listening through the microphone for some sort of uh, user voice. Uh, and so basically we're going to say session dot recognize with type SK transaction speech type dictation. What does this mean? What do these random letters mean? They basically just mean that Nuance will listen for user's voice and convert it into uh, text. It'll dictate it, okay? Um, or the user will dictate to it, basically. Okay, so that's what that is. You don't really need to worry about that too much. I don't know why they haven't created an enumeration for this, but they haven't for some reason. Uh, they could have done SK transaction dot speech type dot or, or speech type dot dictation, sorry, uh, which would have been a bit cleaner way of doing it. But whatever. Uh, continuing though, then we set the detection to long. Now this can also be short or none, uh, and so basically long means that the user will be able to literally say in paragraphs with punctuation and stuff. But you could also set this to short, and that would be like a sentence for like a quick text message. And you could even set this to none. Now the reason I'm not doing none is because that would require an entirely separate function from that delegate that we're, or that delegate that we are conforming to, SK transaction delegate, uh, and so basically uh, we would have to sort of say when the user would click a stop button uh, in order for Nuance to actually stop listening for the user's voice. Uh, and, but with detection, it'll automatically realize when the user is done saying stuff and will automatically just sort of stop listening and sort of tell us the answer. Uh, and so that's why I use detection. Uh, and so that's why I also like to keep it on long, because with long you can really say short stuff as well, it just isn't as good at it, but with short you can't really say as long uh, of things. So I'm just going to keep it at long, you can always change this if you'd like. And if you need help with the dot none option, please do tell me, I will have my contact info at the end of the video. But continuing though. And then we set the language to English USA. Now again, you can use whatever language you have. Uh, I assume there is a link in the documentation for the Nuance Speech Kit SDK, uh, and so basically they would describe uh, sort of the languages that are actually compatible with Nuance. And so uh, if they do have a page like that, if I'm able to find it, it will be in the description. I hope I find it for you. That's uh, basically. Then we set the delegate. Uh, oh, the delegate. I don't know why I keep saying delegate. Delegate. Uh, then we set the delegate of that session to self because we are conforming to that protocol, and that there has to be a reason for it. Uh, and so this is why we're actually doing that. All right. So that's why. Uh, that's basically what we're going to do there. However. What happens when Nuance is done sort of getting the answer for us? Well, that's where the next function comes in. Now, 
If we conform to a protocol, the protocol will give us optional functions that we can, or mandatory functions that we can include into our code in order to add some functionality. For example, this session's delegate has been set to self. And so now, what it's going to do uh, is since we conform to this delegate, uh, and we're setting ourselves to that sort of a delegate of the session, it'll know that when we're done, we have to contact view controller transaction function. Now there are many transaction functions in this uh, protocol. Uh, however, one of them, which is uh, quite interesting, called did receive recognition. This one will actually be called when the Nuance SDK is done uh, sort of recognizing what the user said and transcribing it. And so basically what we do here is we actually get a SK recognition from the Nuance SDK. After that, what we want to do is we want to take the highest scoring candidate from that entire list of uh, sort of uh, ca candidate answers of what, uh, the, what the user could have said. Uh, we want to take the highest scoring candidate and we want to put that into a string, okay? We're going to put that into one string and put that into the uh, result label's text. Um, uh, we're going to set that as the text of result label, which is our UI label that we uh, declared up here. Alright, so once we've done that, we've already given our user uh, the answer for them. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set the record button's title back to listen because we're done listening now. We're not listening to the user anymore. And so we're going to set the button back to listen. That's it. Alright, so that was pretty much uh, all we had to uh, describe for the code. But now, as I said, I'd like to show you one more thing, which is actually absolutely fascinating. If I were to actually say to this app, Okay, I have to get ready. This is a lot of stuff to say. All right. This app is running on an iPhone, comma, which runs iOS, comma, however, comma, my Mac, comma, which is an iMac, comma, runs Mac OS X, comma, which runs Xcode, comma. Okay, great. So as you can see, uh, what has happened is it's transcribed that entire thing uh, into this app is running on the iPhone, which runs iOS. However, my Mac, which is an iMac, runs Mac, oh, Mac OS X, M-A-C-K OS X, which runs Xcode. Now, this usually works if I were to say, Mac OS X runs on my iMac. And for some reason, it gives us M-A-C-K. Don't know why, it was working a few minutes ago. Anyway, uh, so I mean, that's a problem with the Nuance SDK, uh, not with our code. So, uh, I mean, that would be fixed soon, I guess. It keeps changing, I guess. Uh, I mean, it's machine learning, so it would have kept learning from uh, people's uh, responses to the SDK. But then, again, whatever, continuing. That's going to be it for this tutorial. I really hope this uh, you enjoyed, and I really hope this was helpful for your project, Tara. Uh, if you have any more, if uh, you have any more questions with your project uh, regarding the iOS development, I'd be glad to help. Uh, and everyone else, if you would also require help, uh, you can actually comment down below uh, with your question, suggestion, or feedback, and I'd be happy to get back to you. You can even email me at tajimani at gmail.com, uh, and you can also tweet to me at tajimani. That's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed please leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you really liked it, and even share the video. That would really help out a lot. Uh, in fact, I actually just hit 1,000 subscribers a few days ago. Hooray. But uh, continuing though, hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe. That's going to be it for this video. Goodbye.